In this lesson, we're going to look at how we can create custom variables such that we can control measurements of our subassembly parts when they're in Civil 3D. To do that, I'm going to go to the Packet Settings panel. Let me drag this divider over. And in Packet Settings, I'll click Input Output Parameters. And right here, we can create parameters. By default, we have one called Side, and you can see it currently does not have a value. Let me go ahead and open this up, and I'll say Right. So if I'm going to insert this part into Civil 3D, and there's nothing else on the assembly, by default, it's going to want to drop it on the right side. Just for a second, I'm going to click Fit to Screen, so this shows up a little bit better in the preview window. All right, let's create a parameter. I'll click Create Parameter, and then I can define what type of parameter this is. Notice some of the options we have. Integer would be a whole number. Double would represent a value with a decimal. A string would be text. Grade would be a percentage. Slope would be 4 to 1, things like that. 4 colon 1. Yes, no, side, super elevation, you know, slope direction. We'll look at some of these as we go. For right now, I would like to create a parameter that represents lane width. So I'll make this double. And then I am going to click in the name field here, and I'll call this lane width. You are not allowed to use spaces in these names. Don't worry about forgetting that because if you do happen to put a space and hit enter, it will tell you that you can't do that. So this parameter, we'll call it lane width. It's double. It's going to be an input parameter. I'll be entering that in Civil 3D. Default value. For right now, let's make it five. And then I'm going to come down to display name. This will be the formal name that you see on the properties palette in Civil 3D. So let's call this lane width. And if I wanted to, I could give this an optional description. So now that I've created that variable, let's assign that to the geometry that we have in our subassembly. I'm going to drag this over. I would like to edit this link at the top. I'm going to select the link. I can do it from here, or I can select that geometry from the flowchart. Either way. Now that I've selected that link, I can see that link was created when I entered point P2. That point was defined from P1, and we gave it a slope and a distance. The distance is delta x, and that's 12. Well, rather than entering that 12, I'm going to type lane width, and I'll press Enter. Notice now that it accepts that value, it is now showing it using that value. So now I have this variable controlling that width. Let me change that to 10. You can see the difference. Let me change this back to 12. There we go. So now that I have a variable controlling the width, let's use one to create the thickness. I'll choose Create Parameter. It's going to be double. For the name, we'll just call this thickness. And then for my default value, I want it to show up well on screen. I'll make it two for right now. Let's select this link over on the right. This is the link that was created when we dropped in point 0.3. Point 0.3 was placed relative to point 0.2, and you can see it's delta x, delta y, and it's negative 1 foot below. Well, I'm going to make it negative thickness, and I'll press enter. You can see that change. Now we got to do it to both sides. I'll grab link L3 here, which represents point P4 when that was created. We'll make this negative thickness. Perfect. Now that I have that variable, I can test it over here. Let's make it 0.5. Looks good. I'm going to set that back to 1. So that's working. Now we can take care of the cross slope of the lane. I'll choose Create Parameter. For my type, I'm going to choose Grade, because I want to enter a percentage. That's why I'm using Grade. And then I will call this Cross Slope. For my default value, I'm going to put in 5%. And with all of these, I can come down and put the display name, pavement thickness. I'll get the display name for the previous one, too. And then we'll do cross slope for the formal name. All right. I'm going to go back to link one. Let me click that. This is where we entered the data. And I can see the slope is negative 2%. I'm going to make this negative cross slope. You press tab to accept that. You see the geometry change. So you can see it's very easy to define your geometry or make your objects parametric simply by creating these variables. I'm going to make this extreme. We'll make it 12%. Okay, that looks like it's working. Let's set that back to 2%. Now that we've created some variables such that we can control the width, thickness, and slope, what I'd like to do in the next lesson is look at how we can drive this geometry using some targets, maybe a horizontal offset or a profile. We'll do that next.